Righto. Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, this is our first Motueka Town Catchment webinar. Um, I'm Darren Palmer from the Tasman District Council Communications Team. I'm going to be facilitating this afternoon's proceedings. Um, as we go through, I just want to uh, firstly highlight a, a, few, a bit of housekeeping. Please feel free to ask questions. Uh, we'll compile them throughout. So use the Q&A function on the taskbar at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you use the Q&A, we can, uh, we'll collate the questions and um, have a, a question and answer session at the end of this afternoon's presentation. Um, the Q&A function, uh, the, I'm sorry, uh, at the bottom, the chat function will not be monitored. It just means there's, there's too many things to, to keep an eye on all at once. So we won't be uh, monitoring the chat, but we will be taking um, uh, questions and answers uh, at the end. So remember the point of the session here, which um, hopefully the presentation will just take around 15 minutes. Um, and remember, it's to provide an overview of the draft Multiweka Town Catchment Plan and to answer any questions you have before making your submission. We have a comprehensive and highly interactive overview of the plan on our website, which we're using in, uh, as part of today's presentation. However, there are hard copies of our draft plan also available at the Multiweka Service Centre. The lead presenter today is Walter Waltman, the leader of our infrastructure planning team from our service and strategy group. Walter is assisted by our stormwater planning advisor, Emma McFarlane, and our strategic planning manager, Dwayne Fletcher, will also be on the side, uh, as is Robert Workman, uh, to answer any queries you'll have at the end. But principally, it's uh, Walter's show today. Walter has control of the screen, and um, welcome on board, Walter. Yeah, thank you, Darren. Um... Toi tu te whenua, toi tu te moana, toi tu marae ana tangata. Healthy is the land, healthy is the sea, healthy is the place of man. Um, welcome to the Motueka Town Catchment Management Plan. Uh, this plan combines our current knowledge uh, of the urban catchment and our stormwater networks in Motueka. It identifies issues and it sets out a series of actions to help us achieve our aspirations. Uh, it provides a long-term direction for the management of stormwater within the Motueka urban area. Just want to be clear and clarify that this is not a plan that covers the greater Motueka River catchment. Uh, it also does not cover other townships like Riwaka uh, or Brooklyn. It's purely a plan for Motueka town. But the goal of the plan is to combine stormwater and flooding information, environmental, social, and cultural information, and I would also like to acknowledge here uh, Mana Fenua uh, for partnering with us to develop this plan. Uh, as you can see, the catch and management plan is a, a digital story format and it's best viewed on a computer or a tablet. Um, it utilizes interactive maps, images, and some links to other relevant resources on the internet as well. So at the top here, you can see a number of tabs, as we call them, and each tab has sub tabs as, as well. Um, and I will take you through the, the, the several tabs as we, as we go. Uh, the format has been used before for the Richmond Catch and Management Plan, and we plan to use it in the future for other Catch and Management Plan. However, we, we're keen to get your feedback on this format. Do you, do you prefer this interactive sort of um, approach over a more traditional style um, report, I guess, that, that we could produce as well. So keen to get your feedback on, um, on this format. So as you scroll down the plan, you can see um, the, the information that you can read and, and uh, quite often the, the images on the, on the right changes to uh, to show you something else, or it prov provides a map that you can um, zoom in and zoom out of. So the catch and management plan focuses on five long-term stormwater aspirations that were set as part of the urban stormwater strategy that was adopted by council in uh, 2019. For each of these aspirations, council determined where we believe we currently are on our journey um, and where we should be in 10 years, as well as in 30 years time in order to eventually achieve the aspirations that we for um, that we set in the in the storm on the strategy. So these targets help us identify our improvement actions. 
our progress will be tracked with a monitoring plan and the catch management plan will be reviewed and adjusted in six years time. So I'll now briefly take you through the separate tabs. Uh, first of all, starting with um, number two here, Te Mana O Te Wai. Um, this explains the principles of Te Mana O Te Wai, which is something that we need to give effect to in accordance with a national policy statement for freshwater management. Um, it, it means that the first right to water is to water itself. Um, There's quite a lot to cover today, so I won't go into much more detail around these principles. Um, but if you're interested, there's a video here on the right that you can uh, look at, which explains it really, really well. I'll move over to the next tab, catchment overview. Um, this is where you um, can read about the catchment characteristics, such as uh, rainfall, soils, groundwater. Um, this first map clearly shows that Motueka is is low lying, it's it's flat terrain, minimal gradient from uh, from west to east. Um, you can see the hills in the background and the flat river and coastal plains or swamplands that Motueka was development, developed on here um, in the front. Uh, the map also shows important historical Maori place names, place names like Tematu, green area, Awamate, where the river is or used to be, and um, Puketutu, which is a, an old wetland area as well. So there's a lot of information about the catchment in here, if you scroll down. Um, and there are also sections about the catchment history, subcatchments, and our stormwater assets. And you can get that, to that information if you click through the tabs and, and scroll down. Um, before we get into the, um, the different aspirations and key issues, uh, I'd like to take you to this last step here, actually, number eight, around um, integration. There's a, a specific aspiration around this, which talks about managing stormwater in a holistic, efficient, and cost-effective manner. And, um, and that's because a lot of the issues that we're facing are, are interrelated. Um, and we need to look at them in a holistic rather than uh, isolated way. So some of the examples uh, are shown in the diagram on the, on the right. For example, there are effects from stormwater on our wastewater networks and water supplies that we need to consider. Uh, transportation has an effect on stormwater, um, both from a quality point of view as uh, from a quantity point of view. Um, and then, then there's multiple flood risks, risks here at the top um, as well that we need to consider and that, that all interact with each other. So this is just a summary. Um, there are many more interrelated challenges, so it's quite a lot. Um, however, the key message here is that in order to manage stormwater uh, and other council services efficiently and cost effectively, we will need to take a, an integrated approach. And that's exactly what um, we're aiming to achieve with this catchment management plan. So I'll take you to um, the first theme of the, of the plan, which is around stream health and aquatic habitat. Our aspiration there is um, urban streams and aquatic habitats and coastal environments are healthy and accessible. Um, the diagram there on the right shows our targets for the, for the medium to long term. And if I take you to the key issues, there is a map here, which was developed by Council's freshwater scientist. Um, um, it shows aquatic habitat, um, an assessment of aquatic habitat in, in Thorpe Creek and, and Woodland Creek. Um, and this provides an indication of the state or natural condition of these waterways and how healthy they, they are. So both creeks are obviously man-made and they're highly or, or highly modified. Uh, so they score quite low at the moment. However, uh, they still have ecological values and, and there's definitely opportunity to improve these values going forward. So our improvement actions around this are to encourage and support community initiatives to improve stream health. Um, uh, we, we want to work with landowners to plant and fence the, the streams. 
and we need to protect Inanga spawning sites that have been identified along both Woodland and Thorpe. And, and another important uh, action is that we can optimize how we operate the floodgates and how the gates affect the natural tide cycles, tidal cycles. So going, moving forward to contamination. Um, the aspiration there is um, that stormwater discharges do not degrade the water quality and ecosystem health of our streams and estuaries. Um, and the key issue is that um, main roads, car parks, commercial sites, uh, all have stormwater running off and this stormwater runoff picks up contaminants and, and degrades the water quality and ecosystem health of the receiving environment. Uh, in addition, uh, wastewater overflows are partially caused by inflow of stormwater and uh, during large storm events, this can, this can happen and this presents a contamination and health risk as well. So on the map, you, you see um, these high use roads, primarily the state highway, high street, of course, uh, but a number of larger car parks as well, and some other um, busy streets in Mochuega that presents a potential contamination risk. So in terms of improvement actions, uh, we'll be looking at retrofitting stormwater treatment to these main roads and car parks, uh, education and uh, developing awareness about the impact of um, how sites are managed uh, around stormwater is quite important. And um, we're planning to investigate a way to reduce uh, stormwater inflow into our wastewater network to uh, reduce these overflows. Uh, there's also a component of educating the community in Motueka around how they can help to reduce wastewater overflows. And going to the next tab there, which sets out our aspiration for flooding. Um, the aspiration is such that stormwater flooding does not create a hazard to our community or cause damage to properties. And, and the key issue in, in Motueka is really uh, the fact that it's flat, low-lying, meaning it's challenging to convey and discharge stormwater to the sea. And because of this, we are limited in what we can achieve using traditional underground stormwater infrastructures, such as uh, pipes, sums, and manholes. And these pipe solutions are also expected to become less effective in the future with the sea level rise. It's also important to understand that Motueka faces flood risk from different sources. So there's a coastal inundation uh, risk, there's a potential risk of river flooding from the Motueka River, uh, there's stormwater flooding, and in, in some areas there's groundwater that can come to the surface as well. So these flood events can all happen in isolation, but they can also happen in combination with each other. So solving one flood issue doesn't necessarily reduce the flood risk as a whole. Um, the flood risk is, is also expected to increase in some areas um, due to climate change, either by sea level rise or due to an increased, um, increased rainfall, or again, a combination of, of these, um, these impacts. So rainfall runoff is, is now uh, directed into an underground network of pipes, but that's not how it, um, what, what it's always, uh, what it always used to do. So um, currently these networks do not have the same capacity as the natural waterways and low lying areas that would naturally flood. Um, um, and, and large areas are now filled in with uh, buildings and, and natural streams that you can see on the map here um, have, have been either piped or, or built over. So this is um, a historical photo from um, the 1940s, I, I believe, and um, these these natural channels were um, were still quite obvious um, at the time. And and I'll move on to the next tip where you can 
you can see what that area looks like now. So you can use this, this slider here to uh, pull the historical aerial with those historical waterways over the, the current um, situation. And a lot of these historical waterways have been, have been piped and in some instances um, been built over. So yeah, uh, as, as I said before, the, these, this pipe network does not have the same capacity as the natural waterways used to have. So I'll show you what the, um, the flood map looks like in, in Mochuega in a 10% uh, AEP, which stands for annual exceedance probability. So there's a 10% chance that this flooding occurs in, in, any, in any year, uh, also known as a 10 year event. And you can see that the flooding uh, is quite scattered through, throughout town uh, with many different relatively isolated locations. Um, it also shows that the flooding is, is mostly contained on the roads. Uh, and it's important to understand that in, in, in some areas, um, those roads are designed to do exactly this. They act as a detention or an overland flow path so, so that when the pipes have capacity, again, they can drain the water slowly to the coast. But in the meantime, um, some of the roads are indeed uh, flooded. Then um, if you move to a more extreme flood event, also known as a 1% a, a or a 1% chance of, of occurring in any year, um, also known as a one in 100 year event. And I'll just um, talk while the, the map is loading. Um, you can see that the flooding in, in these more extreme events is, is much more widespread and it's not just contained to the roads. Um, in general, flooding, this type of flooding is caused by, uh, by overland flow paths that drain from the west to the east and um, are blocked by roads such as High Street. They're basically acting as a, as a barrier, which result, results in, in ponding behind the road and, and ponding on private property. Uh, there are also some areas that are affected by a combination of stormwater and high tide. Um, and, and this will, this impact will be increased to, um, during sea level rise in the, uh, in the future. And then, in, and then in addition, there are localized low-lying areas which also experience flooding uh, during large rain events. So I just wanna um, emphasize the importance of the, the floodgates at Wharf Road. Are really important to ensure that stormwater can discharge during high tides and um, floodgates are also relatively resilient to sea level rise so they remain uh, effective well into the future so the flood map um, shows like i said flooding from an extreme event uh, now as well as in the future with uh, one meter sea level rise so the purple is one meter sea level rise um, and the blue is um is what would occur in um if if a if a, an extreme flood event would happen say um, this week or tomorrow present day. In terms of improvement actions, uh, large and costly interventions would be needed to address flooding at a catchment scale from extreme storm events. And these type of events have, a, as I said, a chance of one percent uh, occurring in any year. And the required solutions are either very technically very difficult or, or they are impractical to implement in an existing urban environment. Um, and based on the number of properties that would benefit, the cost per property for these type of solutions comes out significantly higher than the average property value in Mochuega, which makes a lot of these solutions uh, not cost effective. Um, and then furthermore, some of the investigated solutions are not future proof considering climate change or life cycle costs and and they may have a high risk of failure when we when we need it. And that's particularly the case with um, solutions that use uh, pumps. However, it's not all bad news. And even though there may not be cost effective or future proof solutions to address flooding from extreme storm events, there are definitely other interventions that will make a difference to the community during flooding from more frequent but less severe events. Um, An improvement include uh, road sump upgrades, uh, installation of soak pits that utilize um, infiltration into the, into the ground. Um, and there's a number of areas where we can improve overland flow paths as well. 
We will also further, further investigate opportunities for type upgrades um, in combination um, with addressing wastewater overflows. And then finally, another really important action is to op optimize uh, how we operate the, the floodgates, both Wharf Road as well as uh, Old Wharf Road. So the um, improvement actions are summarized in a table in the, in the catch management plan here. And there's another table, if you scroll down, that talks about all the options that have been considered and, and why they are feasible or, or maybe less, less feasible in terms of uh, practicality, cost effectiveness, and, and how future proof they are. So I'll move on to the next uh, tab there development. The aspiration there is that we enable water sensitive growth for future generations. There is um, a really good video from Niwa explaining um, the issues and also talks about how we can, uh, how it can be done, how we can develop um, these future residential areas in a more water sensitive uh, way. So new developments provide opportunity to build a resilient and water sensitive township that enhances the natural environment and reframes our stormwater key issues into one of opportunity. And I highly recommend um, watching that video because it explains it much better than, than I can actually. So uh, in summary, um, I'll take you circle back to, the, to where we started. Um, I just want to emphasize the need to look at all of these issues in a holistic and cost-effective way. Uh, council will always look to address multiple issues in, in combination where possible. And um, uh, and then finally, I'd, I'd like to thank you for listening and uh, we're happy to answer your questions. Darren, over to you. Do you have any questions in the, in the question and answer section? At, at this stage, no, no, Walter, but clearly it's not a quick fix. It's not going to happen overnight. It needs uh, advanced and detailed planning. Uh, so as it stands, no one has asked any direct questions of, of the presentation today. Um, and as, as you can see, those this is a, a fantastic um, resource to look into the issue and to get full knowledge before making a submission. So that's what we're encouraging here is to dig deep into this, have a good look around. It, it, it provides many answers um, and use it to develop that uh, submission. We're looking for submissions and my screen has just disappeared on me, so I'll get it back up. So um, submissions on our Mortaweka draft town catchment management plan do close at four o'clock on Friday, the 4th of March. So please, um, you can make a submission the traditional way um, and drop it into one of our service centers, or you can do it online. It's available on our website and you can use this story map to uh, work your way through the issues and the the things that you think are imp important in, in making your submission. So with no further questions or answers, um, oh, we do. There's a, how does climate change and sea level rise affect, uh, yeah, affect the effectiveness of soap pits? Well, to, um, yeah, d does, does the, the, the rising sea level, um, are, are, are soap pits worthy in, in, that, in that vein? You know, it's definitely something that we have considered and uh, it's something that we need to consider. Uh, with sea level rise, we expect the groundwater table to come up uh, in, in certain areas in Mochuaca as well. So we've basically identified areas to the west of High Street as um, uh, having a, a, a better opportunity to, to use soak pits as, as a way of discharging stormwater. Uh, whereas to the east of, of High Street, that's that's becoming increasingly more difficult in the future. Excellent. All right. Well, given that, uh, thank you very much for, for um, supplying that, that question to, to that questioner. Um, so in saying that, um, it, it's time to wrap up. Thank you for attending today. Uh, we re really appreciate you taking time to, to find out what this is all about. And as I said, again, this is open until for submissions until the 4th. Uh, 4 p.m. on the 4th, Friday, the 4th of March. So make sure you have your say and uh, we'll move ahead from here. But uh, in the meantime, thanks very much. And if you want to return, we are holding a, another session and all details of that are on our website. So from me, Darren Palmer from the Tasman District Council Communications team, Walter Wortman, Robert Workman, Dwayne Fletcher and Emma McFarlane. Thanks very much and we'll see you later. <laughs>